Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Sharon. I'm so glad to see you again here today. Today I'm interviewing a very special guest whose name is Jennifer Lebedev, and she is the owner of English with Jennifer, which is a YouTube channel, and she's also starting a following on Instagram if you're interested. Um, Jennifer, would you like to say a little bit about your channel and the things that you're doing? Sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me. But I've been on YouTube for quite some time, um, actually over 10 years. So it's been a slow process of growing, experimenting, figure out what I'm figuring out what I'm doing. Um, but I've been online since 2007. I also blog and I came from the classroom. It's been a lot of fun making that transition um, and really just embracing my identity as an online teacher. And yes, I still experiment more recently going on Instagram. So that's fairly new. Relatively speaking, it's still new, about mm -hmm. one, two years. Mm -hmm. I first um, met you in person, I think it was TESOL 2018 or 2019 or something like that. And you're such, a, you're such an engaging speaker in person because you have such interesting stories and you just you're authentic you you tell it like it is like it's not all it's actually really really hard to you know create all this content and be kind of your own online um you're an entrepreneur really yeah and yeah. you talk very um not only um passionately but realistically about it. if you want to do this this is what is involved um and so i really appreciated that so thank you no, my pleasure. I'm always excited. It's, it's just been a huge, um, well, a wave of people coming online, of course, because of things going on. But I've always been excited over the years to see that interest grow. My first TESOL presentation was, goodness, was it 2010? Mm -hmm. And it was like YouTube and beyond. And I remember it was being packed. And I was just telling people, there's this YouTube and this is what I'm doing and you can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> and just getting people excited. And they were, they were interested in it. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, years later, it's just like everyone's on YouTube. Everyone's at Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. And mm -hmm. so it's been really fun to see how that interest has really grown uh, across mm -hmm. our field. Yeah, excellent. Um, so on, on that note, what advice would you give someone who's recently graduating and they're kind of looking at the field and they're like, you know, maybe I'll teach online and make a living that way. What would you say to that kind of person? It's possible to start out, but I have to say I truly value the experience that I gained in the classroom first. Um, I started out teaching English as a private instructor. I worked with businessmen and children, and then within just a few months, I moved into a private school teaching um, children, teens, and adults. That was over in Russia. And when I came back to the States, um, I also stayed in a classroom setting, working at an IEP for a number of years, also gained admission administrative experience. So I really feel that through that all through that experience, I built my foundation. And that's what helped me feel like I can do this on my own. I can figure things out because I have experience under my belt. If I had started out completely um, on my own, I think I would have been flailing. <laughs> so it's also the support that you get when you are in a school setting. You have your staff immediately there. It's built in to have that network yeah. of support and you learn from your colleagues and you ask questions immediately. When you move online, you better have a good network in place because you are working alone. And when you have these questions, where do you reach out? Who do you reach out to? Yeah. If you don't have that network in place, it's going to be hard. I think that it's, I'm so glad that you said that because I was just thinking about when I was a new teacher, what oh, made me yeah. feel com confident that I could actually do it was yeah. talking to someone who had done it. And then oh, like, yeah. and when I failed and like talking to them about failing, they were like, oh yeah, this totally happened to me too. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm not like doomed. Like I'm not, it's not like I should leave this profession, you know? Exactly. And it's not that we'd have perfect lessons even now. You have the great lessons that you feel so excited about and those that you think, gosh, I think I could have done that one better. <laughs> but, um, but initially, you know, we, when you're in the school setting, there's, a, there's such value in having a staff and the teacher's room. You know, when you talk about um, what went on between, in between classes, you, if you have a question or something to say, something to learn from, I, I, you benefit a lot from that. Um, but it's also just being in the classroom and, and being immediately exposed to a range of learners and also gaining experience with the group setting. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it was easier at first, those first few months I was doing one-on-one -on -one, um, and maybe that was a bit easier initially and then to move into a classroom setting. But I, I really value 
having had different experiences, going from one-on-one, -on -one, going to um, classroom, keeping the two going at the same time, um, and now being online. I think versatility is so key um, in our field, especially right now, that, as I can say, like people who, who were thrown on to certain platforms, like, well, how do I turn on my camera versus, <laughs> I, I, I get it, you know, when I first started making my first videos, I didn't have a clue what I was doing with my video camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't know about editing software. Yeah. So it, I have sympathy for those who were not ready for online teaching, but were forced into it. I thankfully have had the time to grow into it.